Welcome back. Well, on Friday's video, I made this little tool here that really helps when you're hand cutting spirals. If you've ever done them before, trying to reach around behind the lathe is a pain. So this makes it pretty simple. I did two different styles, one with uh, the center drilled out and then a, just a solid one. But for the video here, I did another, another one here, another hollow one and I'll show you how to lay it out and everything and how to use use the jig. It's pretty simple, but it's it makes cutting them with the tool a lot easier and even even sanding it. But I'm the reason I did this is I'm working on another project and I needed a way to easily cut spirals. So I was I'm working on something, but I'm gonna have a different color wood inside the the spiral like that. So that should be out in a few weeks, but. Um, Let's go ahead and take a look at it and I'll show you how to how to cut this. The wood shop is sponsored by All right, I have a piece of cherry here. It's about nine and a half by inch and a quarter. And I used a five eighths inch brad point bit to drill a hole all the way through the center. Put it in my chuck, put the Jacobs chuck on, drilled halfway down, flipped around, drilled the other way down to get it get a hollow. And you can change the size on this to whatever you want. And then once you get it get it drilled out, put it on the lathe in between centers like that and bring it down to the thickness you want. Don't bring it down and then drill the hole because it's not going to be dead center and you're going to have to end up doing it again anyway. So once you get to that point, you have your hole in there, go ahead and put the wheel on here. And you can mount this. I'm just using the spur center and my uh, live center here. Put it right in the center. All right, to lay it out, go ahead and lock your spindle down. Use your tool rest. Just draw a straight line. Flip it all the way around. And draw another straight line on it. And then we're going to go ahead and mark out for the spiral. All right, to mark out for the spirals, this completely depends on what you're doing with the piece. So I'm gonna have a tenon on each end when I'm done, so I want a little bit of room down here. I went ahead and set the calipers from the center of this point to the top up here, so it's half. And you can vary that depending on whatever effect you're trying to get to. If you want these exactly round, you wanna measure the thickness of this here. So I'm gonna come in about right there, put a mark. Just put it right in that mark, draw it up, and so on, all the way down. There we go. I'll put one, one back here, too. All right, and then that gives me about an inch or so on each end of dead space. Just go ahead and mark all the all of these when you're laying this out with the tape too if you want to put four of these lines down it you can get it a little more accurate that way when you're putting the tape on but I think this will be fine for this I'm just using uh, painters tape what I want to do is start at that center that junction right there. Hold it around and then match it up with the other one here. Then once you have the tape on, go ahead and take a pencil and mark just on the edge of the tape all the way down. Once you have your line in, you can go ahead and cut along that with the saw. Just don't go in too deep. You don't want to go all the way through the first time. And just follow that line down. Just go in a little bit. You just need enough for the chisel to ride on. So now that you have your 
saw mark in there, tools nice and sharp. Go ahead and run on the bottom side here of it and right along that, that kerf line. We're gonna curve out quite a bit of this, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but the kerf mark really helps guide the tool. And the handle, I had to make one of these when Robin was painting this one last week, and it is a pain trying to reach around the lathe and turn this thing while you're trying to hold the chisel on track, so it really helps. So, just go ahead and keep running it up. And if you had, I don't have wood woodworking chisels, they would actually be better for this, but I'm just using a spindle gouge. And it does all right, it's just, uh, I think it'd be better with some other chisels. I've seen people do it with, with wood carving chisels and it seems to go a little better than this. Just like that, run it up. Stop it there. And just keep doing that, take a, a few passes, take off quite a bit of material, and then we'll go ahead and flip it around in the chuck here in a second. Flip it around on the lathe. This is just a long process, so I'll share some pictures throughout the video as we go along. And the first one is from Ken. He did this cool Pinewood Derby trophy out of cherry. What a neat idea. Great job, Ken. And here's another one from Stefan. He did this beautiful segmented vase. It's 244 pieces. Awesome job. And Lewis, he reclaimed some wood to make this box. Very nice. Got a, the bowl and lid. Nice job. And Chris sent me this one on Facebook. It's a cannon he's been working on for a while. Fantastic. Came out great. Nice job, Chris. Now that I have a lot of the material cleaned out with the chisel, I'm going to start knocking down the tool marks with a rat tail file. It actually works pretty good and takes down a lot of material quick. And then I'm going to switch to a little, it's called a sanding taco from Ken at Woodturner's Wonders. It's about half an inch thick, maybe five eighths, but you just take a piece of Velcro sandpaper and stick it to it. It works great for doing things like this or coves. And Mark, uh, you may remember Mark, he was at the Oregon Symposium. He's the one that donated the tickets to the AEW convention in, I believe it was back east, the year he donated, but he did a rain stick. Fantastic job, Mark. Nice job. And yes, I will get down to see you soon. All right, I have it sanded up pretty good. I just wanted to get a lot of the tool marks out of there before I bust through and, and start working on that part of it. But got most of it done, so I'm just gonna do another curve line here. And then we'll just repeat the process with the tool and break, break through. And the last thing I wanted to share was a couple of videos from Jim Overton in the UK. These are his first two videos. It's a two-part series. I've never seen this stuff before. It's called Milliput Epoxy, and it's a two-part epoxy, but it's like Play-Doh. You mix it up just with your hand and then inlay it into stuff. He's got two videos up, uh, part one and part two. He shows you how to prep the bowl and then how to apply the epoxy in it. Neat stuff, Jim. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'm gonna look around here in the US, see if I can't find that brand or some some type of similar project. But again, thank you. And I will put the link down below in the description to his channel and, and the videos as well. Once it really starts to break through, just go nice and easy. I'm just gonna use this file, but when you get in there, it starts to pinch a little bit and you can see it wobble, so just be careful. If you just take nice, slow, long cuts like that, 
you, easier to stop it rather than just you know filing away if it, if it does pinch. There we go. So I just kept working my way down with the rat tail file until I broke all the way through all the way down and I switched to I have a quarter inch dowel and that's going to vary depending on what size you're making but it's 100 grit sandpaper. I went down in there with that, cleaned it up just like that and then two, once you get to this point you can take, rip little strips of, of sandpaper and put them in there and and away like that and if you want these round you would have brought them down a little bit more so they it was the same diameter or same width as the diameter but I'm just gonna leave those like that but if you want to do round ones you can wrap sandpaper all the way around it and it'll help you sand the back side of it but it's just like that it does take a little bit of time but if it's something you're interested in this little wheel for leverage really helps out so it would if it's something you're going to do i would definitely make something like this it doesn't have to be fancy or anything but a couple of handles on it really helps there we go and it really is a long process i think it took me about three hours to make this i think it took me less time to make the jig than it did did this but if it's something you're interested in I would definitely make the jig first it's going to save your hand and your back from reaching around the back of the lathe there and you can use it too if you want to do spiral work on uh, bowls or vases and stuff like that too all right, all right. oh a couple of things I uh, I got a new sticker from Brian at Summers Woodworking thank you Brian I, he, Brian's home of the birdhouse challenge I'll get that put up on the wall there and I mentioned the sanding taco in the in the video so it's a little velcro pad shaped like a little taco you wrap your sandpaper around it it's perfect for sanding uh, coves and stuff like this i sand it over all the little corners with that and that's from ken at wood turners wonders but yeah slick little little tool i haven't seen one of those before but very cool all right if this is your first time here i have a new project video every friday on my main channel i will put a link down below in the description to that and as always take care